service this morning or write that on one of the prayer cards that's in the pew in front of you so that we can lift those up in solidarity with each other. And as always, if there is a way that Pastor Eric or I can companion you through something that you uh, would like prayer for, um, please reach out to us. You have multiple ways to meet with us or reach out to us, and we encourage you um, to reach out to us if, that, if we can be present to you. Following worship, we have our time of fellowship, time of coffee, conversation, and community in the room immediately behind the sanctuary. So uh, join us there, and those of you online, stick around and chat with each other. So we have a few announcements today, a little a word about our worship service in a moment, but um, you notice that I'm wearing my back-to-school backpack. Look how shiny, Hazel, isn't this awesome? Look how shiny it is. I love this. It's so awesome, right? Um, so backpack drive is on. There's several uh, backpacks in the, in, the, in the fellowship area that have been contributed already, and we have a ways to go. So Doug and some other folks are going to be back in fellowship time uh, receiving your commitment to provide a backpack for a young person so that they can go to school with everything that they need. We know that there's a lot of children that their, their families don't have the resources and a new backpack kind of a source of pride so that they can go back to school and start the, the year off strong. So please, we invite you to support uh, the multiple efforts of collecting backpacks. Um, what else? Uh, kids camp this Thursday, day number two, this Thursday morning, we're going to uh, enjoy our second full morning together, have a lot of really fun things planned. Uh, and afternoon, Thursday afternoon, we're going to rearrange the sanctuary for Sanctuary in the Round, which will continue for the rest of the summer. We're really looking forward to that. So if you are able to join us at 1230, I think Thursday afternoon, 1230 or one ish, somewhere like that, come in and it won't take us long and we'll get the sanctuary ready for uh, a new worship experience for the rest of the summer. So a note about our worship service today, we had three young people and one adult accompany us to uh, Del Norte County up in North North, almost Oregon, California. Uh, for a week of service to the community and the land there. And so our worship service this morning will include reflections by the folks that went uh, on that trip. And I'm really looking forward to you getting to hear what they learned and what they brought home with them. And don't worry, I'm not preaching also. I'm just going to tie it all together. You'll get my reflection next week. All right, deal. Uh, but really looking forward to that. And you'll notice the closing song, uh, Gratitude to Janice and Sandra for being flexible, is one of the songs that we sang often at camp. So you'll get to participate in that with us as well. I think that's all the announcements. So it's good to be home. It's good to be here in community uh, as the body of Christ united together to worship our good and gracious God. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as some of our young people lead us in our call to worship. All are invited to rise in body, mind, or spirit. God's glory is pouring for forth from the heavens. The promise is sure and true that Jesus has come to us to show us the best ways to serve God. Come. Let us prepare ourselves for joyful service. Lord, we have made us great service in your name. Peace be with you. Let us greet one another and pass the peace of Christ.
and hang out with Pastor T and some of our youth group friends. Y'all get to come sit up here, Hazel and Abby and Michael. Yeah, this is y'all's show also. Morning, everybody. So um, as it goes here at our church, when you uh, get to come uh, in sixth grade, how many of you are going into fifth grade? You're going to fifth grade, fourth grade? Oh, got to wait so long fourth grade. Maybe we'll make youth group younger. I don't know. But when you go into youth group, you get to do a lot of different fun things. And one of the different fun things that we get to do is go on a summer trip where we go and do work in other communities, helping people build things or grow things, or we take care of the environment around. And this week, our time together with all the young people was around trees and the parts of a tree so what do we know how did the trees feed themselves well after it is planted how does the plant feed itself it puts out what roots and then it starts to grow and if it's a tree it gets a trunk and if it gets a trunk then it gets what branches and leaves and if it's a fruit bearing tree then it bears fruit 
That's a big thing we like here at our church is fruit. So we learned a movement to help us think about how a tree grows in relationship to how we grow. Now, we don't have roots and leaves, but we kind of have roots and branches and leaves, and we bear fruit. So we want to show you one of the movements that we learned. And so Michael and Hazel and Abby are going to show you how that goes, and then we're all going to do it together. And we're going to invite our grown-up friends to do it with us also if they want to, right? Okay, so you want to take it over from here? The seed. Plant the seed. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. hello. And then you got your trunk. Trunk. You got to stand up to do this. You know, trees don't sit. It's your trunk. And then the trunk grows branches. And then the branches grow leaves, leaves. And then fruit. Yeah? Can we do that again? All right. Here we go. Seed. Plant the seed. Your roots. And the roots talk to you there. Hello, 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 hello. And then you got your trunk. Branches. Leaves, 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 leaves. Fruit. Okay. Now, what, what are our fruits? What, is, what does that mean? Hang on. Let me get the mic because we want our Zoom folks to be able to hear this too. What, if we're trees and our roots are our relationships with each other, and what is our fruit? Anyone? What's our fruit, Hazel? Here we go. Um, uh, what can our fruit be? Um, Michael? Fruit can be something you cherish, something that is very important to you. Mm -hmm. What else can our fruit be? What can, what can, what can our fruit be? Um, you know? Can our what is something very important to you, Max? Anyone? A family member? Yeah. Faith, where you go to school. Can our fruit be good things that we do for other people? Yes. Like painting or making something or... Serving our community. Serving our community. Our fruit can be um, hmm, love, joy, peace, patience, patience. kindness, goodness. goodness. It could be faithfulness. Gentleness Todd. and self-control. Todd, Todd, I have I have a really important question, Todd. What what do you what's your question? Can the fruit of the spirit be an apple? What do y'all think? No. No, the fruit of the spirit's not, not an apple. apple. The fruit of the spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, you might, might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So let's do our movement one more time. We have our seed. Seed. We plant the seed. You got the roots. You're branching out. You're branching out. And then you get the trunk. The trunk. And then we... And then you branch, branch out, out you're branching out, you got the leaves, get our leaves. and then you bear and your we fruit. we bear fruit. Awesome. Good job. Okay. Okay. So we're going to say a prayer together, and then y'all are invited to hang out with Miss Jen for Operation Restoration. And then remember, um, y'all got to come back early so you can help Miss Janice and Miss Ann play the chimes. Okay. Is that cool? All right. Let's say a prayer together. You can repeat after me if you want. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. And thank you for the beautiful earth we live in. We thank you for how you take care of us and love us and inspire us to bear fruit. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, see you on a bit. Thank you. Let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the con confession of our hope without wa wavering for the one who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good, for, to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as it the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So as promised, uh, we get to hear the reflections of our young people and chaperones who attended uh, the service trip today, and we picked this scripture today because we, I believe with all my heart that this reflection time will be an encouragement, will be a way for us to be encouraged to love and do good works around us. Um, for, for those of you who um, might want a little more information, we participated with an organization called Sierra Service Project. It's one our church has a history of. Pastor Eric took a group back in 17 to San Diego. Uh, they have multiple sites, one in Arizona, one in Sacramento, and one that was in Del Norte County. Um, like I said, almost near Oregon, gorgeous, beautiful country, beautiful place to be. Wasn't too far, but it wasn't too close. It gave us some time to bond together on that, that road. I want to acknowledge uh, at, at the very outset uh, my gratitude to Amy for chaperoning with us. Um, and uh, she, she didn't just chaperone. She worked. We worked right alongside everyone else. Um, we slept on the floor in the sanctuary right along with everyone else we did sallies well i did once with everyone else we brush our teeth and do this squat thing to this song anyway like that's what we did and we ate outside in the damp morning and cold oatmeal and it was an experience it was great I'm grateful to amy uh and just know that you know amy's checked that box so the rest of you have an opportunity to be a chaperone next year and the year after that um as we go this organization centers itself in communities that are often lacking of resources um, or need a little help um, or uh, need some assistance with preserving um, the, the ecology of that area. So this uh, super well-organized uh, organization uh, is led by uh, college, mostly college-age students who uh, are running the camp and setting the pace and the tone for what we do including enforcing a 9.45 p.m. bedtime, which I don't know how many of you have been around teenagers, but bedtime is a challenge for many people, but not there. It was 9.45. The counselors came and read our bedtime story to us, and it was dead quiet at 9.45. We were exhausted. That's probably, that's probably a part, part of what was to do with it. Um, but those young people... Uh, led this camp with so much love and enthusiasm and it kind of allowed us adults especially the adults that are primarily working with the young people and might be a couple of generations removed uh, have a allow the, these young people to have adjacents to these uh, faith-filled uh, inspired young people singing camp songs doing their chores uh, and engaging in in the work of doing good for other people of bearing fruit in these communities. So uh, I'll just overview briefly and then get on to the reflections of what we did. Some groups built uh, uh, wheelchair ramps for, for folks. One group put in a floor, um, like a hardwood floor, and learned how to do that. Another group, we did a community garden that took several hours because it was really overgrown. Another group um, power washed and painted the entire outside of uh, a daycare type center. The groups also participated together in pulling up invasive beach grass on sand dunes near the ocean, which 
uh, my lower back is still remembering and uh, the lessons. You'll hear reflection uh, next Sunday about that. Um, and we also got to go into the Redwoods and help the park rangers uh, brush the paths because they hadn't had the resources to, to take care of the paths. And uh, also one group got to go build one of the bridges in the park, which required them to get in that cold water up to here and work on a bridge. And they were, they asked for volunteers and those young people were thrilled to do that. I did not. <laughs> I stayed dry. So all of those opportunities in uh, the context of coming together, it wasn't a Christian oriented camp, but it was definitely a camp that understood uh, that God can use us. God wants us to do good works for other people and the fruit that we get is the joy in what we've done. So we're going to invite up, let's see, Hazel and Abby, I think y'all are, no, Michael, you want to go first? Michael's going to go, then y'all are going to go, then Amy's going to go, then I'm going to wrap it up. So uh, please enjoy hearing these reflections. All right, how's everybody doing today? Doing good? Doing good? Um, so, as Todd said, we went to Del Norte County in um, Crescent City, and we, I was one of three youth to go to this camp from our church, and um, I was able to get out of my comfort zone. I don't, I don't, I don't usually go alone in my, I'm kind of an older youth, and I got out of my comfort zone. I was able to meet new people, and I feel like I was able to learn to accept other people's beliefs, and um, I met a lot of cool people. Um, I, was, I was able to branch out, I feel like, and plant a seed in that environment. I, I, I worked on the ramps, so I, I was the one that put in all of the wood and drilled everything. I'm glad I didn't cut off my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I realized how much I really value serving other people, and on this trip, I was able to do that. And um, a little self-promo, on August 6th, we're doing a um, back-to-school um, little carnival for the kids, and that's going to be my way of giving back again to the community. So that is my little reflection, and I'll have Hazel and Abby come up now to do their reflection. So every night when we were brushing our teeth, we would do a workout, um, which Hazel will be demonstrating. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Chad. While brushing our teeth. enjoyed the people there. They were really nice and I met a lot of new friends. Um, I'm so happy that I got to go on this trip and I really hope that I can do it again um, so I can meet new people and help more of the nature. <clears throat> okay. On the first day, my group, the Ivy League, pulled Ivy at the Redwoods. Oh, the ivy was growing around the redwoods, and that was really bad for the trees because it was sucking the nutrients out and making them fall over, which was crushing another trees, and it was just not good. Gardening, we did gardening on the second to last day, my group. We pulled weeds and planted planted plants and it was really special because it was on native land so it felt really important and it was a community garden so it felt like we were doing something for the community as well as helping out the lady who ran it. On the last day we went to the river and had a lot of fun. 
we were swimming and playing in the rocks and sunbathing, and it was so pretty with all the trees and stuff. And on the, la uh, on the night, it was our last pro evening program, we uh, had it there, and it was so pretty seeing like the sunset fall across the mountains and all, all that stuff, and it was just so gorgeous. And I just feel very fortunate for having gone on this trip, and thank you all of the church people for helping us contributing on the trip, and it helped a lot with all of the just having fun. And I'm so excited to come again next year. The last time I was a part of a camp experience was four or five years ago when I was directing the You and Me camp at Camp Casadero. And the last service or mission trip I went on, I was 17, <laughs> 31 years ago. I know many adults worry about the future of our planet, worry that youth may be apathetic. I might have even been one of those adults. But here's what I witnessed. The 50 or so youth represented at SSP, Sierra Service Project, this week, from various churches all around Northern California, Nevada, and even Central California, care a lot. They care a lot about the future of our planet, and are aware of its vulnerability. Caring for the earth by pulling beach grass from native land, ivy from choking out redwoods, weeds from infiltrating community gardens, and clearing paths for visitors at Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park, and even installing flooring, which was my group, I happen to be in a group that, as I told Pastor Todd, that was the group I needed to be in this week. At the beginning of the week, my brain was elsewhere, and I felt like my to-do list and the things that were coming in this coming week were still really present in my brain, and I wasn't able to be present there. And I got to be one of the leaders of a high school group of students that were quiet, reflective, incredibly intelligent. They were talking about things, books that I have never even read. But it really excited me about the idea that somehow, not somehow, God put me in that group. <laughs> And it's kind of wild. Sometimes even when you're resistant or the to-do list is super long, somehow God helps you see why you're there. And at the end of the week, we were reflecting on how important our little group was. And uh, one of the students said, I really appreciated how you helped us feel like peers to you. You weren't in charge, we were just doing this together. And um, for me personally, that felt really cool. And um, another one said to me, I like how you, are, you figured out what you were good at and you did that. So I was in charge of sawing the little notches in the boards to go around the you know, cabinets and the stairs. Um, and the students just diligently hammered in the boards throughout the day. And we had a pretty large room to cover, um, which we did about 95% of and then ran out of time. But um, anyway, that was pretty cool. The other thing that I noticed was throughout the week, there weren't complaints from the students, from the youth. Um, they worked so hard. And honestly, I think the only complaints I heard were from the adults, including me. <laughs> um, 
But probably my favorite thing about the whole trip was uh, getting to be a part of our little team of sanctuary sleepers from DCC. Um, I am so proud of our DCC kids. And while I obviously know one of them incredibly well, and uh, Abby is my niece who I also know very well, I got to know Michael a lot better. And we are so fortunate to have these kids in our church because he's awesome, they're awesome, Todd's awesome. And it felt really fulfilling to be a part of that. Um, the other reason that I'm proud of our kids is they showed up as leaders throughout the week. Um, they prayed before meals. And when I say prayed before meals, like, who's going to pray from our group? And it was Michael. And then it was Hazel. And who's going to pass out the communion raspberries that were picked at the garden? And that was Abby. One of my favorite things was watching these three kids, albeit several years apart from Michael, become closer friends, but more like sibling friends. And I have a couple of those in my life, and they are really important to me. Um, they shared with each other, joked with each other, and had so many pillow fights. <laughs> um, but part of that is the bonding and comfort that comes with getting to know people better. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity um, that all of us had to get away from the distractions, the electronics, the to-do lists. While I'm not ready to sleep on a sanctuary floor <laughs> or shower in a middle school shower <laughs> where, you know, like this, because the shower head is so low. <laughs> Um, I am grateful to have been a part of and to have witnessed what um, is happening with the youth of our community and other church communities because I think we can feel confident that the future is bright. Let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for the one who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke, how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Let us consider how we might provoke one another to love and good deeds. Dear family, what you have heard today, the seeds that were planted and I dare say harvested, you helped us do that. The funds that were necessary to support a program like that um, and for us to be able to go, you helped these young people and us older people have a truly formative experience and what we hope and pray that today as you've listened to these reflections a you've learned a new way to brush your teeth and also tone your thighs <laughs> right but i hope that you've been provoked it's not necessarily a pastor word that we would use during worship but i hope you've been stimulated i hope you've been provoked to continue as i said in the church email this week to continue to be a place of extravagant love where you are inspired to go out and take care of other people and take care of our planet and love love our children and our teenagers for they are our present and our future we are grateful that you supported this opportunity each night uh, or each evening afternoon the counselors and adults all met and kind of did our highs and lows they wanted to hear you know what we thought what was going on and so we'd share a high or low and the first two or three days i didn't have a low there was i mean I was sleeping on it in a sanctuary i know it's not my favorite thing but didn't have any lows but on the 
third or fourth day, I was like, you know what? My, I, I, only, I only have a low. And that is that the rest of our young people did not get to experience what these three young people did. And so it is our job as a community to continue to provide formative opportunities for our young people for the rest of us to find opportunities, whether it's taking a meal to someone at home who's had a rough, having a rough time, or it's collecting those backpacks for children, or it's giving gas money and van money to a group of kids to drive up the coast. I pray that God continues to give us those opportunities so that all of us can be provoked to love and good works. May it continue to be so. Amen. Friends, we now come to our time of prayer where we are invited to name the joys, the gratitudes, the concerns, the grief that may be on our hearts and minds. And so if you have a joy or concern this morning, you're invited to write that on a prayer card and raise that high for the ushers to come around and collect. And if you are online, you're invited to use the chat feature and joy will lift up your prayer in just a moment. And after each petition is read, you're invited to respond with here our prayer, as is our custom. Nicole Noga offers prayers for those young people who struggle with mental health and their families. God, in your mercy. Amy offers prayers. Please pray for a smooth run of Footloose this week, and for me in particular to remember the fun. 
God in your great joy and love. Joy Davis also offers prayers for those coping with mental health issues. God in your mercy. Kristen offers prayers of hope and recovery for the Beaver family. God in your mercy. A few updates on people that are close to us here at DCC. Laura Beaver is home from the hospital and is recovering and we continue to pray for her recovery. God in your mercy. Our, our former senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Alan Kelchner, is home from the hospital after undergoing a triple bypass. He is in good spirits and he is doing well. God in your mercy. Joyce Bainwort, uh, who experienced a fall last week, is, home, is recovering um, and she is doing much better after seeking medical care and we continue to pray for her. God in your mercy. This morning's prayer that I'm going to offer to you was written by the Reverend George Stewart. So let us join to net together now in a spirit of prayer. Oh, uh, thank you, Joy, for the reminder of our online folks. There's just one from Carrie Krausis. What joy to have such great kids in our community that love and work for others. God in your mercy. Thank you, Joy. From beginning to each ending, you, O oh God, are within. Human and divine keeping, blending, God is within. In our coming and in our going, in our learning and in our knowing, as we struggle in our growing, God is within. When supportive help is needed, God is within. When our limits are exceeded, God is within. When life is a hopeless jigsaw, when we cry, we cannot take no more. When downtrodden, we survive, for God is within. When we cease from being greedy, God is within. When we look to serve the needy, God is within. When we use our wealth for sharing, when we stand with those despairing, when we live our lives in caring, God is within. When we act with human virtue, God is within. Strive for fine idols we value, God is within. When we guard and guide each other with compassion, we uncover our true self and we discover that God is within. God, let your Holy Spirit move within us and among us as we commit to love you, to love each other, and stimulating each other toward love and good works. Radiate your love to the world around us. We pray this prayer together, our hearts united and swelling with your great love. In the name of our sibling Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, our loving God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ah, good morning, church. It is so good to be here and um, grace this time of offering for all of the works and the blessings that each and every one of you do each and every day. 
God calls upon us to love one another as God loves us. Even as God has abundantly blessed us with good things, let us bless others through gifts that show we care. For those of you who have already made a gift by check or automated giving, we are grateful. If you would like to make a gift today, please place it in the offering plate as it comes around, or please use our website. At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward and collect this morning's offerings. You shower us, God, with your goodness every single day. And with grateful hearts, we bring you these gifts. Transform them into outpourings of peace and justice to reconcile all people to one another and to you. Amen.
Beloved friends, we have been prepared. We have been prepared to be a sanctuary. And like the light that pours through the stained glass windows of our physical sanctuary, that same light, God's light, pours through us so that we provoke one another to love, to do good works, and encourage those around us. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, that by trusting in God, you may overflow with hope, with light, with good works, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And all the people said, Amen.